The next section is marked adagio, which is slow, but not so slow that we still don't feel the two main beats in a bar. Really important not to feel this in four, but in two. Now we've got this rather lamenting music in the right hand, um, this wailing song. Breathe. Did you feel the sigh there? That creates quite a dissonance with the bass. We've got a in the bass against a D-sharp appoggiatura. There are several things to consider in this adagio, first of which would be the appoggiatura slurs in the right hand. How exactly do we do those? If you look at the marking in the Urtex edition, there is a staccato, it happens to be a wedge, but a wedge and a dot are the same in this period of music. A staccato, I'm now looking at bar 13, that tells us to separate the D from the D sharp, a poggiatura slur, and the same goes for parallel places. So we need a, an articulation here, lift. And the way we manage the slurs for the best sound is to release the weight from the second note meaning that the second note of the slur is going to be slightly softer and slightly shorter. And the way we achieve that at the piano is a down-up movement or a drop-roll movement. I'll show you what that looks like slowly. Drop into the first note, the dissonant note. Begin the lift. You see how I'm beginning my lift? And at some point on this upward wave or upward trajectory, the second note sounds. The finger's got to be firm enough. If the finger's floppy, doesn't matter what I'm doing here, if I've got a floppy finger, I'm not going to contact with my key sufficiently for the note to sound. The expressive quality in the right hand comes in large measure to, to the rest, to making the rests clear here. Rest, because that's, that's an in-breath. And another rest there. Also the left hand, now this is, this is a lot of people just stick the pedal down and play through with a pedal like this. Which is really spongy and um, not good at all. The left hand is made up of two elements, a bass line in a minim, and then bowed, if you think of the quavers as being bowed by a stringed instrument, it would be something like up, up, up bow. So here, do you notice how I put those three movements, those three quavers into one movement? Up, 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 down, up, up, up. So effectively what I'm doing in my left hand is making another drop roll that doesn't actually release the keyboard. Remember that drop rolls can be released upwards and outwards, such as this one, upwards or they can stay in contact with the keyboard and while there might be a little punctuation between the end of the group and the beginning of the next group I'm not actually coming up into the air like that that would be very clumsy and wrong um, now if I've got that controlled so that the repeated chords stay inside my key you see what I've got there? Repeated notes staying inside the key, then I'd, I'm going to need much less pedal than I, I might otherwise think. So what I'm going to do now is to, is to try it with no pedal at all. I'm not advocating no pedal, but I, I am advocating practice with no pedal until you've got clarity of texture, clarity of articulation. Exaggerating, I'm aware the movement that I'm making in my left hand. I'm doing that just so as you can see what it is. In a performance that is going to be really quite quiet, but I still feel that 
that quality of drop into the minim and lift from my quavers. Um, do I want any pedal there? Probably, probably. I would advocate having the foot on the pedal and seeing just how much resonance you need without turning this into a mushy kind of legato. Certainly be very careful of your pedal in the second bar. And here as well, I do not want to hear those connected by foot. So my best advice there, practice it without the pedal until you get a, a really good sound so that you almost don't need any foot at all. And then just see where and how deep um, the pedal might go.